Today, we're going to look at stitch resist. Using a simple needle and thread to stitch and gather fabric, pushing it into a textured bundle that can be dyed on the surface. This beautiful pattern is from China. It's done on a heavier weight cotton than the kimono cloth from Japan, and it is called horse's mouth or horse's teeth. I think you can see the resemblance. So let's look how this is done. In this case, we have two lines, and I will have two folds, and we'll be stitching through four layers of fabric along the peak fold instead of through a single peak fold in two layers. The fabric suddenly becomes bulkier. Therefore, my stitches become larger and, in a way, easier. This is a great technique for someone who does not want to be too fussy. This sample was stitched through knife pleats. So the knife pleats were ironed in, and actually, um, if you like, you can do a quick basting stitch to hold the folds down. And in this case, the mokume stitches are not running across the fabric with the grain, but diagonally. When this is pulled up and dyed, I think you get something quite beautiful. It's subtle. I have done a series of studies, not exactly based on an origami fold. In this case, I have marked a circle on the fabric so that I can keep track of a certain symmetry. Then the fabric is folded across the circle. Then one third of the fabric is folded towards me and one third to the back. Then I sew down this circle and the folds with parallel rows of machine stitching. I experimented with all kinds of variations of this concept and different dyes and different colors so that one could come up with a variety of ways to stitch down these peak folds. In some cases, I have six layers, and in other cases, I go up to eight layers. So I'm going to rerun this fabric through the pleater. And fabric being fabric, even though this looks like kind of a boring stripe, it's not a really even stripe. And when I run it through again, the stripes do not line up. In fact, I'm going to exaggerate by putting a little tension on one side. I'm going to keep the stripes even more uneven. And you can see that this fabric, as it's run through and is repleted, begins to develop what I like to call a moire effect. And here is a fan shape of a very similar fabric. This is actually an organza satin weave. And I used these a great deal at one time in my artwear clothing.